Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson. I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California, and I'm an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry at UCLA with a private practice in West Los Angeles. And today we're going to cover the class 3 composite number 9 deal preparation. This is an academic prototype that looks a lot like the competent tooth that would be featured in examinations for dental students uh, wanting to become dentists and licensed. It is not the actual tooth. This is a prototype. I want to warn you that that is uh, not something you can even purchase anywhere. So let's take a look at the design of this preparation. We're going to look at this uh, as the contact area is present here in the little stripes and then we have the caries which is occurring below the contact up into the contact. This is the shape we're looking to do. You can see that this is the shape that would remove the caries and yet leave the incisal contact present. There's the incisal wall, we have our facial wall, and of course we have the gingival wall. The other wall of importance of course is the axial wall and that's where you're going to find most of the caries in this tooth. And We want to keep a 90 degree exit angle. So the preparation will be done in this particular manner, going in and spin sweeping back out. So let's get started. The Acadental Module Pro 1 arch is going to be utilized for the examinations and you'll just screw the tooth in there. Here it is from the facial. And I'm going to be working on the distal lingual, that is the surface where the caries has been placed by the company. And we're going to make an access from the lingual because most of the caries is located from the lingual. I think a facial approach would not be wise. You can see that the tooth has uh, got a very nice morphology. Notice that the fossa is very flat, that you have a nice marginal ridge, good contact area. Now when you perform a class 3, you typically do not break the incisal contact. You will definitely break the gingival contact and you'll break most of the facial contact, but you will not typically break the incisal contact. So, where is the caries located? The caries is located not in the middle of the contact area, but slightly gingival to the middle of the contact. So your preparation is going to be centered from about 0.3 millimeters below the contact up approximately 2 to 2.5 millimeters. So sometimes it's a good idea to draw the outline form on the preparation. You can definitely do this during the examination and don't center your prep in the contact area. This is a big mistake. You want to think about the fact that the caries will start below the contact area and creep up into the contact area. So let's remember that, that you're going to start your preparation near the lower portion of the contact area. I'm gonna utilize a 330 diamond. The reason for using this burr is that this enamel structure is very brittle. And if you use a carbide, it tends to skip around the surface. And I have found while practicing that it can actually cause these, this enamel to break off. So let's go ahead and we're going to start the preparation with the burr perpendicular to the lingual surface. And we're going to make just a punch cut. Now the length of this burr is about 2.2 millimeters long. So you could go the entire depth in towards the facial. You're not going to be going too deep if you do that. And, you know, remember to protect the adjacent tooth by leaving a little shell over there on the distal side. And then just gently move the burr upward towards the incisal a little bit more gingivally to create a little bit of a slot. And you can see the caries clearly present inside of the preparation at this stage. We're going to want to make sure we remove all of the decay. Not just the colored material, but also the soft material. So you're going to need to use both your visual and your tactile senses. Don't worry about going the entire length of the 330 diamond. You're going to find that you need to go further than that to extend beyond the decay and to break the contact to the level that we need. And it's nice to take it slow because this is a very small preparation and we're going to be really mindful of the adjacent tooth not to cause any damage and leaving a little shell. Also, it's pretty cool because the decay goes rather deep axially, in other words, towards the mesial. So your box doesn't need to be so narrow mesial distally. You can open this up pretty far and not worry about going too far axially. 
Now your objective here is to get the basic shape going and to ultimately break contact. You're not trying to remove all the decay at this point. You're just trying to get a nice rectangular shape that's with rounded corners and you're working your way incisively and gingerly so that it's about two millimeters tall from gingival to incisal. And get it to the point where the enamel is so thin next to the lateral incisor that you can break this off easily. Now take a look at this. Uh, the company has brilliantly placed carries at the DEJ, which is exactly what we see clinically. And they also have carries on the axial wall. So you can see that you're going to need to move the burr more axially right here. And you're also going to need to remember that there's carries along this DEJ. Look at that, how it's soft. This is just phenomenal. I am very impressed with this simulated carries exercise that you need to do on the examinations. And you know, quite frankly, I think that this is the way to go. It's, it's time to stop practicing on patients and trying to recruit patients for examinations. Uh, studies that have been done looking at the validity of artificial caries have been robust and powerful in showing that there is virtually no difference in terms of students' measures of competency. 10, 6, 14, enamel hatchet. So just use this to perform the Sturdivant chip and uh, break off that little shell that is protecting your prep from the lateral incisor. And you notice you have plenty of room to place the, the hatchet into the preparation. It's a little fiddly at this point because you have to remove these little areas of broken artificial enamel and you want to do it so that you're not hitting the lateral incisor. So it's critical that you have the preparation deep enough axially to accomplish this without damaging the lateral and a very sharp, probably brand new hatchet would be the way to do this. You can do this in the mannequin and in the mirror quite easily. It's not a very difficult move to do with the, with the hatchet for a class three. And you know, always keep this at least uh, 90 degrees. Uh, a little bit more flared even would be fine. So if the angle between your wall and the unprepared tooth was obtuse, that would be completely acceptable for composite. But the opposite would not be a good idea at all. Now at some point you're going to be faced with the reality that you need to move the preparation more facially. And this is just a little bit nerve-wracking because you're extremely close to the lateral incisor. And remember, hitting the adjacent tooth is one of the major reasons why people fail examinations. So let's be smart. And I'm going to use a fender wedge small. These are made by Garrison Dental Solutions. There are different types of these wedge systems. You could also use a matrix band held in with a wedge or just a matrix band alone. And you'll, you're going to create some separation in the teeth and you're going to see things kind of move a little bit. But uh, this will really protect you from nicking that lateral incisor. So let's not do that. Let's not do at least three things. Let's not nick adjacent teeth. Let's not ever leave decay behind. That is the dark material or the soft material that may be located in areas that you're not used to seeing perhaps. And then definitely let's uh, not leave any undermined enamel. So make sure that all the enamel is going to be either 90 degrees or flared such that it's not undermined. But I can work through this area right here and not have to concern myself too much about hitting the adjacent tooth because the wedge is going to take the brunt of the, of the damage. And now we can get back in with the enamel hatchet, clean the walls up just a little bit, and uh, we are just about done with the preparation. Yeah, I like what we have here. The facial wall is broken, the gingival is uh, broken by about 0.3, and then we have caries now to remove. So remember, outline form first, and then caries removal next. So let's start to remove the caries, and I think that a four-round burr is probably the best thing. If you use a two-round burr, I think you're going to find it's a little too small, and it could create too deep of a removal, so you want to use this four-round. And on this artificial caries, let's not leave any stain behind. Uh, let's just remove it all. 
Now, if you're working clinically and you encounter some stain that's very firm and tactically very, you know, hard, you could leave it, right? But if you have stain in these uh, acadental teeth, you are going to find that it is going to be soft. There is no such thing as stain that is hard in these artificial teeth. So that is another important factor for you to consider. You must remove every single bit of stain. Now that you remove the stain, you're not quite finished because you need to go back into the preparation and make sure there is no soft areas at the DEJ, anywhere around that deep area, is the, the area that you just removed, and you should be good to go. No bevel is required anymore, so let's stay away from bevels. They make uh, really uh, the preparation larger and harder to do. This is an RGS1, which is 0.4. So you can see we're probably about 0.3 uh, broken uh, contact there on the gingival. To give you an idea of how deep we are axially, yeah, about two millimeters and maybe about 2.5 millimeters tall for the preparation. And uh, I think that this works out pretty well. So wishing you all the very best.